So, previously on the channel. Bruh. So, you broke your hot swap socket. Let's get this board apart and go into further detail on how you can fix this issue. Yeah, that switch always comes off when I take the space bar off. Yeah, I can't help myself. I think I'm still in a honeymoon phase uh, with custom keyboards. Sorry, but let's uh, get it off. And um, now you can see um, the jumper I did, but you can see how hot it got, kind of melted a little bit because I was trying so hard not to have to jumper it, but just use solder and a lot of heat to reestablish that continuity. But I ended up having to do jumpers. So we're gonna go into uh, some more details. And you look at the PCB, uh, a lot of PCBs, the traces run inside the substrate. And see that blue arrow let's imagine that is that trace then going up to the surface to go to those pads that the hot swap socket solders onto so in this picture here you can see some uh the pads just totally ripped off of this pcb some people get away with dabbing some solder in there and getting it all back on there and getting that continuity back but i think for the most part it doesn't work out that way you're just gonna have to do uh jumpers but to explain what you're jumpering, I'm going to let Wendell from level one uh, do what he does so well and explain. You can pretty obviously see that there's not enough wires in those cables to carry one wire for every key. You don't need to. It's a matrix. It's rows and columns. And so like if I press R, it's going to be a certain row and a certain column that's energized. And the microcontroller in this will scan rows and columns looking for keys. Now, in key rollover is the same kind of rows and columns matrix except it adds a diode which prevents electricity from flowing backwards you see if i press two keys the electricity can flow backwards from uh, one love me some level row one seriously you guys gotta watch that channel row, if you're not so so getting it in a little bit more detail here doing the best i can with the equipment i've got uh you can see this is a this is the bad one that popped off and uh i'm going to take a jumper from a known good socket next to it what I'm going to call the high side and also what I'm pointing out right there that's the diode and I just uh, dabbed some solder to reconnect the PCB connection from the diode to that part but then you're taking a jumper from what I'm going to call the low side of a known good one to the low side of the one that popped out and then yet again to another known good one on the other side of it and that's to reconnect the Jay -Z, the daisy chain continuity that those pads and that pcb was servicing so after doing that soldering you also want to put epoxy on there because now there really isn't anything holding it securely to the pcb uh, with those pads kind of blowing out and so i mixed up the solder and i'm using a toothpick and just the tip just the tip to get just a really small amount of epoxy uh, along the sides. And I also did the uh, spacebar hot swap uh, socket because like you saw earlier, every time I pull the spacebar, the switch pops out. So that's getting a lot of use of getting a switch jammed back in there all the time. So I, I did it really finely because again, this is very, very permanent. So as you can see, uh, just even with just that tip, it really did kind of lay down in there and you don't want to get it inside the socket and get it like all over the place. So there's just enough to anchor it down that much better and take some stress off the, the pads themselves being the sole thing holding these hot swaps. And giving it the 24 hours secure, here I am editing with this super awesome like 15 year old Best Buy uh, keyboard with these super awesome extra keys, function keys. Come on, you gotta love it. Um, seriously, I think this might be my end, end, end game keyboard. I mean, just listen to that diaphragm, like smooth, but gritty at the same time. It's just, it's awesome. Awesome. So just a quick recap. Uh, as you can see here, the blue line is what the OEM trace was following from, from just the visual there. So the green lines are your jumper wires to uh, restore what that trace was doing 
that when that pad breaks off, it breaks that daisy chain of of the uh, of the trace. And then there's that red line, which is the uh, output side of the diode going to uh, that other trace, which I, I like to call the high side. So with just that little bit of work there and then adding epoxy to make it totally secure, uh, you should have a fixed keyboard.